Welcome to the Aspire Technology Partners TechCast, a technology trends webinar series. This series is brought to you by Cisco. Aspire Technology Partners is a Cisco Gold certified partner with Cisco master specializations in collaboration, security, cloud, and managed services. I'm your host, Josh Dole. Excellent. So thank you to those of you who have joined us live and for anyone in the future watching this recording. I'm Josh Dolby and we're here with another instance of the Aspire TechCast series. Today's session will be about the Aspire MDR, Managed Detection and Response capabilities. We have two really excellent presenters today. We're going to have an open conversation about this. So you'll see this slide and then we're going to get away from the slides and it will be um, our faces as we discuss. And again, any questions in from our audience using the Q&A panel here in the Event Center tool, we really appreciate those. So, uh, gentlemen, welcome Doug, welcome John. Thank you, Josh. Thanks, Josh. Happy to have you here. Uh, Jared, do you want to introduce your plant? Because I thought the plant was probably important to mention. <laughs> like, uh, he wins the, the best room for today. So congratulations there, sir. So I, I'm going to pull back from Slideware. And like I said, we'll do this as a, a conversation so that uh, so we can discuss because I think actually what's needed now more than ever is more conversation. So can can you tell us and I think we probably start the ball with with Doug, uh, maybe start with a bit uh, to frame up what the uh, sort of managed security services market is kind of about where it's at, the state of it, if you will, and give us an idea of um, sort of the context where we're fitting in here. Sure, yeah. So um, the managed security services market has been around for a long time. I mean, many of us have been in this, this space for, you know, 20 plus years. And I think early on it was, you know, there were some tools um, and, and we were seeing events um, but it was more about managed firewalls and managed IDSs and, and, and trying to identify those threats and, and, and those means. And I think today it, the, the market has evolved to the point where um, enterprises are looking for more, right? They're looking for a, a more definable outcome than just security monitoring. Um, and at that same time, I think the technology has evolved as well. So now we have a much richer set of security tools that span, uh, you know, cloud and DNS, um, more advancements in the network layer, and at the same time, we, we've had this um, adoption of the endpoint protection technologies as well. So now we have a really, really rich set of tools that allow us to do a better job of identifying uh, and responding to security threats. And, and that's, what, that's what enterprises are looking for. They're looking for a solution that's going to reduce that mean time to detection. So, so let me just get that straight. And again, I like to remind people that I have a collaboration background as a former collaboration engineer and, and so forth and so on. Um, so sure. when we get into security, I, I say I, there are so many things I get to learn here. So you're telling me that security is not simply a firewall and intrusion detection anymore. You're, you're telling me that two things. One, the, the sort of uh, the landscape, if you will, for how bad actors can get into and onto your network and get after things has changed a bit. That's one thing. And then two, and again, I'm just confirming probably what a lot of people here know who are not just collab guys. Uh, and then two, that what companies and organizations need in order to monitor uh, this situation has also of also the tools that we have both technologically as well as from an expert human level ha have changed a bit? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, both of those things. And then we, we throw in some other factors there where, and, and this is not new to anybody, um, we don't have enough security professionals in the market for, um, you know, for everybody to have one in-house. It's just, A, it's, it's probably, um, you know, not, you know, cost efficient for everybody uh, because they're expensive. Um, and then, you know, the other things that are going on are the, you know, the attack surface, as you alluded to, has expanded uh, dramatically. Um, and the, the third thing is if you do have the tools and you do have some um, skills in-house, um, there's this 
there's this concept of threat or alert fatigue, right, where you're getting so many events at you, it's very difficult to discern what's real and what's not real. So as a result of that, obviously, you know, folks are going to say, oh, that's probably not real, or they, they get so many of the same things, they, they tend to tune them out. And that's where, you know, risk enters into the picture. So that's very much like my email inbox and great deals on car insurance. At some point, I just shut down, right? I'm like, this is all mm -hmm. probably not, not actually accurate. So, um, yeah. So, okay. So let's pivot just a little bit to, to, to Mr. Rossiter. Um, John, could you tell us, I mean, on the face of it, what is the, the MDR um, and, and how is it different from maybe other services that you've seen in the market? And if you would, in that too, tell us a little bit about your sort of hand in the, the kind of the creation of this, because I think you have some unique insights. Oh, thanks. Thanks, Josh. Um, yeah, so essentially, if I, if I had to kind of sum it up and, and give you, a, you know, our elevator pitch for, for MDR, right, where we, what it is is essentially a focused set of tools where we're getting uh, a look at all areas of the network, either on-prem or off-prem, onto the endpoint as well, right? So we're, we're addressing the, the issue of, you know, we, where it used to be you know, a firewall kind of, you know, that was your, that was your security, right? Uh, a layer three, layer four firewall, and, and uh, you, were, you, were, you could check that box. Unfortunately, that's just not the case anymore, 70 plus percent of the applications that we utilize now, we're all cloud-based, so how do we address that? How do we work, address the work from home issues that we have, right? So um, we're essentially getting not just you know, next-gen firewall, by the way, or IPS, right, which sits at your perimeter, uh, but we're also looking at potentially things that are occurring on the endpoint itself. We're looking at things like DNS, and we're also putting and combining that with network traffic analytics, where we can actually take a look at both on-prem and your cloud deployments, right? So we're getting all of these different things and it gives us a different angle of information um, where we can go ahead and effectively detect anomalies and potential threats, indications of compromise and the like. Um, so we had, uh, you know, to address the last part of your question there, right? Where, where did we, you know, where did we see this fitting? Where did we, how did we develop this? Uh, we've been in the uh, security business pretty much since uh, I've been at Aspire. Actually, Aspire started out in security uh, back in 2004. I, I joined the firm in 2008. So, what is that, about 13 years? Uh, yeah, I didn't have as much gray back then, by the way. About this high at this point. <laughs> the majestic gear that I have is now. So, uh, but anyway, um, <laughs> in any case, uh, you know, what, we see, what we've seen, you know, through the years is that it, you know, there isn't enough in terms of uh, security tools that are out there that can really give us a good idea. When you're dealing with security, unfortunately, in a lot of cases, you're dealing with the preponderance of the evidence, right? You don't have a full picture of what's actually occurring, right? So the more angles that we can provide, the better information that we can uh, understand about what's actually occurring uh, in the environment and on the endpoint, regardless of where that endpoint is, right? So um, what we've seen also is that customers want more, right? They want more than just an alert. Um, they want actionable uh, items uh, to follow up on, right? So how am I going to, okay, so all this is great. It looks like I got a problem. What do I do now, right? Uh, so that is one of the things that we offer uh, with our MDR is that response, right? So that's part, that's the R in MDR, right? So it's not just managed detection, but it's also response. Um, where we come up with a plan to help you uh, mitigate the situation, whether, whether that is, you know, potentially getting some potentially unwanted uh, type of applications uninstalled or, you know, something as uh, significant as isolating the device on the network, depending upon the tools available. So, so you, you're painting a, a picture, if I, and I'm, if I'm picking it up accurately, that obviously the service takes a lot of, information from different elements of the technology. You've got a group of experts who are, uh, and Doug, I think you said, what was it, alert fatigue? Something like that, it, mm -hmm. but it was, I like that, right? Um, those people know how to sift through what's real, what's not, right? And they can start to develop a picture of, again, this constantly evolving 
situation where threats are coming from, you know, people are finding novel ways, right, to get into the network, to find out, you know, how to spoof or mimic, uh, you know, Doug Stevens, the VP, they may want to spoof or mimic his email address so that they can start requesting ACH transfers. We, I think we, we have probably have a couple of stories we'll get to, but um, where these things happen. Um, and, and so these people inside of the MDR service are they're experts, they can, they can look at it, and they can help not only say, look, identified an issue, but then turn to the, the customer entity and say, hey, look, we see this happening in your organization, and we, we have a, a way to mitigate this or, or to close the gap. Um, how, when they do that, I mean, is, is that something that they, they meet with a customer sort of infosec team or customer leadership and, and take them through how that, that would work? I mean, what, give me an idea of the customer teaming and engagement um, that, that something like that in the process would, would happen? That's a great question. So that is a very customized uh, piece of the MDR service, right? And so that is uh, dealt with uh, and addressed uh, during our onboarding phase, which is anywhere from two to four weeks. Uh, and essentially that's when, you know, both teams, and, you know, when I say both teams, I mean it, um, you know, there's act, there needs to be active participation on both sides in order for this to be a winner. Um, so we get to know each other. If we don't uh, already, we understand the escalation points. We understand what's important in terms of applications and in terms of devices and within the environment, the people also. Uh, and we get a feel for their level of security awareness, right? And so we're constantly, uh, you know, when we meet with our customers every quarter at least, and usually it's, you know, especially at first, it's a bit more than that. Uh, we're constantly looking for ways to improve what we see, right? So it's not just, hey, look, these are the security incidents that we saw, these are potential issues, but, hey, look, we see this in your policies, we would recommend X. Or, you know, we think that, or we've seen this work with some of our other customers, we would definitely recommend you go this way or look at this potential product to help fill that gap, right? So it's, a, it's an ongoing consultation, right? Um, that occurs uh, with the service. So it's not just, hey, look, this is um, once and done. It, it's a con it, mm -hmm. but like I said, there's a, there's a give and take. Um, and in order for this to be successful, you know, both sides have to contribute. So it's truly, I mean, I, I think teaming is, is the, probably the best word or a good word for it, right? I mean, you, your team, uh, again, of security experts are working uh, deeply with the organizations, customers that we're working with in, in order to, again, absolutely yeah. work need, out what the plan would be. Okay. Yeah, for, for sure. Um, and, you know, just to kind of add on to that, right? So the needs uh, per customer vary so greatly. Uh, I have, mm -hmm. we deal with customers that are, you know, potentially a little bit larger and have very well defined InfoSec teams, um, you know, in which we become basically a part of that team. Uh, and then we have customers that, you know, really rely on us for everything in terms of security, right? They may have networking personnel, they may have desktop support personnel, um, but when it comes to uh, the events and the logging, uh, they really do rely on our expertise to really, you know, keep them uh, in the know on what's actually occurring. So it varies. So, and like I said, that, that piece of the puzzle where we talk about that onboarding um, that, that's where we kind of figure all that out and we put a, put together a customized playbook for each one of our customers. So that's, uh, okay, so, so onboarding where the two teams get to know each other, understand everybody's roles. I mean, I, so with this, I, I've seen a couple of Aspire, so what I'd call projects sort of kick off, right? And I think this is like an ongoing project, if you will, right? Where it's, look, I gotta have the right people's phone numbers and know what they do and who do I call at 3 a.m. on a Thursday versus a Saturday, <laughs> you know, if, if, it, if it rises to that. Um, yeah, That's very, uh, this is very interesting. So the, 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 uh, the engineer in me, and I'm sure some of the engineering focused folks who are out there might ask, hey, okay, so wait, under the covers, like what are the cool gizmos and gadgets that, that you all are taking advantage of, right? Mm -hmm. What is the architecture or technology um, under the covers uh, look like? What are we, what kind of things are we using in order to, to you know, to get this information interpreted and then, and then help uh, devise plans. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'll go ahead and, and review that. So the uh, one of the first ones and probably the easiest uh, pieces of information to understand is your next-gen firewall or, or your next-gen IPS, right? So 
um, that sits on the perimeter uh, and that has a lot of capabilities and that essentially sees all north-south uh, traffic coming in uh, from the perimeter and leaving, right? So that is obviously a very good point at which we're going to go ahead and grab the specific information from that. Beyond that, um, we utilize uh, DNS, right, so that we can uh, prep 90 plus percent of the attacks out there, um, you know, regardless of, of the type of attack, will rely on DNS, right? So having the visibility onto uh, each one of the clients, regardless of whether they're on-prem or not, is really important as well, is a huge piece of the puzzle, right? So if we get an alert somewhere else, uh, one of the first things we're going to do forensically is look at DNS, because that tells us a, a number of, of interesting things about what that, what that client was doing at the time and right after. Um, and then, you know, we'll go ahead and combine that um, with uh, the endpoint information as well. So uh, depending upon the endpoint solution, uh, we'll be able to really dig into which processes were at work when this had actually happened, you know, what, what files had traversed uh, the device, um, and, you know, the information that is uh, specific to that device. And again, very important that we have this because, you know, especially with work from home, right, we know that that's going to leave the perimeter, that's going to leave the corporate environment, and uh, we won't see that through the firewall in many cases now. Um, and then, of course, uh, the, the, other, the other piece that we do uh, really recommend is uh, network traffic analytics, right? So the best way to kind of, um, you know, sum that one up is that is uh, the piece where we're looking at the conversations that are occurring on the network uh, and we're baselining them, right? So we're getting to know each and individual endpoint on the device and what it's what its uh, usual behaviors are, right? So we can pick up on things that are abnormal, right? So if I know that I have a server that typically just speaks to uh, a number of internal servers, you know, maybe it does backup, maybe it does, uh, you know, some application processing for a web front end, I, there are a certain set of behaviors that I'm looking at, right? Well, now all of a sudden it starts to talk externally uh, to places that it normally has never, you know, gone for updates. Those are the types of things that we like to do. And, and if you look at the overall arching context of, of uh, you know, when we receive alerts and other uh, potential solutions, we're able to kind of marry that up and say, well, what happened on this device? Maybe things didn't, you know, rise to the level of alert, but now we can get, you know, a 30, 60, 90 day understanding of, of what this particular client was doing, right? And so forensically, forensically, it really helps and aids, uh, you know, the information we can provide the customer, right? And really kind of pinpoint uh, in a lot of cases, you know, what the situation is, right? So the, uh, Doug and I kind of talk about this and we have many discussions on it, right? So which is the best security uh, mm. solution? <laughs> You can't have too many of them, right? So they all give you something a little different. They give you a little bit different of an angle. And uh, my favorite word, they give you additional context, right? So, so much, so so much of that is so important uh, to what we're able to do uh, from a, from a service perspective. John's favorite word is context. My favorite. So, I'll just piggyback on that, Josh, if, if you don't mind for a second. So yeah, please. You, to sort of level set everybody, here in, in New Jersey, we have a 24 by 7 network and security operations center, right? It's 100% it's, um, Aspire employees. Um, everybody's here local, onshore. Um, and, and this is the point where we're receiving those, those events. We put a, a vigilance appliance on site. That's, that's our, our ingestion point for all the security events that, are, that are, we're taking from the, the client's environment. Um, we have directives that are built into our, our platform and our SIM that's identifying what's important and what isn't important. And then when an alert's triggered, that alert gets sent back to our network and security operations center where there's eyes on it, right, 24 by 7. Um, and, and the beauty of it is that all of this is happening, as you said, under the hood. We're, we're taking all of, the, um, all of that uh, information from the, the security points 
we're managing that environment on behalf of our, of our clients so they don't have to worry about the care and feeding of those security tools. All of that is built into the, the MDR service. And then on the back end, when things, you know, bad things happen, we have experts that are, um, you know, detecting, they're uh, validating uh, those issues based on um, threat intelligence that we use uh, heavily. And then, as John said before, we have a very high-touch model that provides, um, you know, very relevant, uh, very actionable response actions that we can then, in, in conjunction with the clients, um, either we can perform those actions or, or we can recommend them um, and they can take those, those steps. Uh, but it's a very high-touch um, resolution or remediation process that takes place. You, so just in the, the last couple of months, I feel like I could come up with a couple of totally out of the ballpark questions here because I, I, I get the impression that we could probably just quiz J, JR on, on, on security ideas for hours, um, which actually, instead of asking him that, let me ask this. Do you do time? I, I mean, you have a team, right? And the team performs a lot of the service, John. Um, do customers ever say, hey, you know, I need a couple of hours with, 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 with John specifically, big picture, because we've got these, these, we've got the work from home situation going on, right? We, we've got sort of the concept of zero trust security, which I feel like everybody is in some degree, mostly, maybe not certain three letter agencies in the Fed, but everybody in some degree is moving towards, right? Look, I want to push certain things out, whether it's, you know, my CRM or, you know, uh, uh, other sort of processing and information systems. And then there are certain industrial systems that I can't ever move because they're connected to things on the factory floor, right? And so I've got to have kind of the hardened security there. But I would imagine you could probably put together really an interesting map unique to each organization that you work with to show them, okay, look, this is, this is what you look like right now. These are some of the gaps, which are always changing. And these are the things right out of the gate that we're going to start addressing. Is, is, that, is that a thing that people have you do? Because I think that'd be fun. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's uh, what you're describing is a strategy implementation services for all these different uh, types of security solutions. So absolutely, um, you know, oh. customers will come to us and say, we just don't know what we need. Um, and, you know, we'll go ahead and start with an assessment, right? We'll take it from there and understand uh, what uh, the business needs really are. Uh, and then we'll try to marry the technology to those business needs, right? So hmm. um, it, it, that, you know, that's beyond the MDR for certain. And but we'll, what we'll try to do with our MDR customers is have that ongoing strategy sessions as well with as part of our QBRs uh, baked in, hmm. right? So um, our customers, we want to make sure that they stay safe uh, for obvious reasons, right? So there's uh, there's there's incentives on both sides to make sure that things uh, continue uh, to be successful, right? So, yeah, there's there's ongoing strategy there, of course. But yeah, we, we when I when I joined uh, Aspire back in 2008, um, that's mostly the work that I did, where strategy, mm -hmm. uh, you know, deployments, implementation, design, uh, you know. So we've been doing this for a great many of years, uh, you know, even before the company was started. Uh, I had worked for uh, Cisco as an SE. I was security specialized there, so picked up a bunch of stuff there. I was a, a firewall slash network engineer for many years prior to that. So, and you know, there's a, a lot of folks here that that have the same type of background, so that we leverage, right? Um, so, yeah, absolutely, uh, that is part of our full complement, I would say, in terms of services, right? So, being able to put together that strategy, where do I start? Um, you know, what's next? Uh, can we put a plan together? I would say that. That's a, and yeah, you know, if you don't have a plan, um, we need to we need to work towards getting it for sure. So that's that's again technically uh, that's just that's that's very interesting. I, I would think that too we could probably overlay some different sort of maps, whether it's from an enterprise networking perspective, security perspective, collaboration perspective, IoT, right? Um, the 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 applications and data center, right? We've had Kevin Leahy and, uh, and Chandler on, on the uh, TechCast series. Um, we start to get into some really uh, interesting and very robust um, uh, 
sort of macro views of what an organization would look like. So, sorry, I get ahead of myself. I think that's that just seems like something I'd like to nerd out on sometimes. Really important, um, absolutely. So, you mentioned the word context, and Doug said that that's your favorite word. So, I want to ask you about context because, um, you know, I don't have my book collection here uh, in front of me, but I, I think context is important, right? Your plant uh, gives us a little bit of context, right? Um, so, can you talk to us a, a, a bit you know, from the, the security operation center, the MDR point of view um, about context? Right, right. So think about context as a, as a different angle, um, right? So when you get a single alert, uh, potentially, and a lot of customers will have, uh, you know, next generation firewall or IPS, and you'll get a single alert, that single alert doesn't really tell you a heck of a lot, right? You may have an indication that something is wrong, uh, but you can't, quite put your finger on it, right? Uh, it depends, it really does. Um, but what you can do when you do have additional contacts, well, now I can take a look at my DNS logs. I can see what that client was doing right around the time. Oh, well, it was doing these updates. I, I can go ahead and, you know, this, this is obviously a false positive or, you know, or it was going to a, a handful of uh, malicious sites. There's a, there might be something more to this. Um, I see some behaviors that are potentially, a, you know, an issue maybe yesterday um, that showed up in our network traffic analytics, right? So I'm kind of piecing a puzzle together here, right? And I'm building a case uh, against, uh, you know, or for this this device, right, that we're actually looking at and investigating, right? So that's, it, it, look at that context, and I kind of, you know, I, I do overuse that term, but look at it as a, a different angle of, of uh, looking at the same thing, right? So if you, mm. if you take a 360 view of anything, you're going to get a much better understanding of, of you know, holistically what's occurring. So, so sort of take my laptop here, right? You could look at my laptop with endpoint protection and so forth and say, again, from a DNS perspective, hey, it's, uh, you know, Josh went to this certain website, right? That seems strange. We're watching you, Josh. It, it, Make sure we, you understand that, right? We, we are watching. Right. Okay. Right. right. So it, it seems strange, right? But then you do the forensics and say, well, hey, it's 11.30 on a Tuesday. He's researching various companies he wants to work with. So, okay, wait, that makes sense. He could be hitting this site someplace versus, hey, wait, it's, it's 3.30 a.m. I don't see any other activity on his machine. He's, he's probably in bed asleep, or we, you would hope I would be, or maybe I'm getting up for a really early run. Or well, Anyway, um, probably not. Uh, so that would give you, again, that's that sort of like broader picture to say, hey, what's, what's going on versus just like I see the pings and so forth. So it, it starts to create right. a picture yeah. of like, yeah. this is unusual. Yeah, if we, if we have the endpoint uh, piece of it, we're able to take a look at, you know, what actual process, process has spawned that, uh, that connection, right? That's really important. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, understanding is that a browser-based session? Obviously, you know, something occurring that late at night is always suspect. Um, but yeah, if we're able to marry uh, the process with the actual network uh, connection, now we know, all right, well, this wasn't browser-based, this was created by this file. Okay, so let's, uh, let's follow up on what this file is doing. Uh, and then we can analyze that with the tools that we have, right? So it, it, again, it, it really does vary and it depends. And this is one of the reasons why we have a team of experts that, you know, this is what they do. Um, you know, in, in contrast to, you know, one of the things, one of the challenges that our customers, uh, you know, has to deal with is, you know, look, you've got to run an IT organization, right? Um, usually security budget is, is a tough one, even in the larger organizations. Like I said, we, we, we partner and, and like to use that word a lot um, because it really, in order for us to have an effective relationship is the partnership that we are seeking. Um, but we, you know, we'll, we'll work with all size organizations, right? And everybody has their pluses and minuses. But, um, you know, with 24 by 7 SOC is not something that most of our customers are able uh, to go ahead and provide. Oh. Uh, environment. So, right. I think, uh, and I, I can just take that one step further, Josh. Um, so everything that John described in terms of that context and that richness of information that we can utilize to be able to make decisions intelligently about what's real and what, what isn't, you can have all the tools in the world from, a, from an enterprise perspective. But if people aren't looking at that 
and people aren't um, trained to understand what's real and what isn't, then you're sort of, the investment is, you're not seeing the, the full return on that investment. And um, we're, we're big fans of Gartner. Um, we, we talk to them on a regular basis. And um, they, they came out with some research recently that basically said uh, the majority of enterprise uh, IT shops are over-invested in tools and mm -hmm. under-invested in detection and response. So their recommendation is buy less or, or spend more, a, a larger proportion of your IT budget on detection and response capabilities versus more tools. More and the, tools. the detection and response capabilities is exactly what John described. I think that there's a, probably an incredible life lesson in that concept anyway. Um, you could probably look at my garage and start to say, hey, wait, fewer tools, more time spent understanding. Um, so the, the managed detection response, right? I mean, it comes down to the experts, the people, right, who can see and understand the patterns and, and, and see what's going on and, and, and make, um, make assessments and then start to generate plans. So can you, and, and again, jump ball, but can you kind of walk us through a bit? And, and Doug, you did a really great job earlier of saying, hey, look, this is the service, right? We have a device. It sits in the customer's architecture, right? It, it, it is there to collect information. And then our knock and sock team, 24 by 7 in Eatontown, are able, and again, people across the United States actually, are able to then start to absorb. Can you, can you give us a sense of kind of what happens uh, when an alert is received, and, and let's just say again, you know, it's that uh, executive user's laptop that starts doing something strange in the middle of the night, or the the printer, uh, you know, in a building, or some sort of consumer IoT device, right, starts doing something unusual or going to weird uh, uh, sites or locations. From the moment that that thing, that that item happens, kind of give us an idea what the process is of of how the 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 team at Aspire then sort of is notified and, and, and you know, takes corrective action or, or alerts people like what, what, what happens? So I would say, um, I'll, I'll just go ahead and, and take that one real quick um, and then so can add. But essentially what we're doing is, you know, we're taking feeds from all these uh, different security solutions, right, and we're putting them back into our SIM. Now, the SIM has a logic uh, based on our uh, experience with these products, right? We're experts with these products, and we understand what's good and, and what needs to be followed up on or, you know, what's, what's bad is really the way I should say it, right? So those conditions will actually trigger alarms. Those alarms will create tickets in our system, and then right away um, our SOC analyst will go ahead and start working on that, right? So one of the first things that they're going to do is contact the customer and let them know, hey, look, you know, we've received this alert. Uh, we're going to go ahead and follow up uh, on this alert, and we'll let you know, uh, you know, after we've done a more thorough investigation if there's anything that needs to be done. Um, then they'll go ahead and they'll peer into uh, what's been happening within the SIM first, Right, so we'll we'll pull all the information related to that device, that IP address, that potential user, uh, and then we'll start to put things together. Okay, so we're starting to see, you know, we've we've seen a few hits uh, on malware, you know, in our DNS. There's a few things that we we saw within IPS. None of these collectively may have triggered an actual alarm, but putting them all together now, um, you're starting to get a better sense of uh, okay, this, what we're seeing is. It may be important, it may not, um, but if, after that more thorough investigation, which will usually leave the SIM, and it depends upon the tools that we have available. If we have the full complement, we may utilize a technology like uh, Cisco Threat Response uh, to get a better understanding and visibility of, of what that, that the client was doing in one spot, right? So it depends on the customer. Uh, and the tools that we have deployed there, but yeah, we'll utilize that. We'll go into uh, Umbrella quite a bit. Um, you know, we'll look at the, the information within the endpoint, uh, and we put together a report for the customer. And uh, an actual, and it's actually, you know, it, it, it's important to understand it's an actionable report, right? So it's it's written by humans, um, so that you know our customers can understand it. 
And, you know, if we feel it's important enough, we'll go ahead and pull the trigger on a potential isolation for the customer if they've already given us the okay on that, right? So it really does depend. A lot of times it's, uh, hey, look, you know, you pro you've got a potentially unwanted issue here, um, meaning, you know, it's, it's probably a browser injection type of uh, issue that can usually be remediated with either reinstalling, resetting, uh, you know, the actual browser or uninstalling potentially a few things. Um, so it really does vary. Uh, and, you know, and at the end, we're giving the, the customer a detailed understanding of what had occurred and, you know, what steps would need to be followed up if any. Um, you know, so again, we're trying to, you know, bridge that gap for them and make sure that they're getting the most from those tools uh, that they've invested heavily in. Right, so um, we're, we're giving them that part of the team, that expertise uh, that in a lot of cases they are sorely lacking. Okay, I have a human question for you because I, sure. as you describe that process, I have to ask this. So when an analyst has an alarm, you know, and again, it's a ticket, queue, the analyst, something comes in, the analysts get excited when they start to see really unusual activity. I mean, I imagine that that they must sort of get sort of get going, if you will, when it's without a doubt. Hey, look, this is weird. without a doubt. It's like a, it's like an episode of CSI almost every single time, Ooh. right? Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. You ever see sneakers or you know that? I'm Yo, I, I was. That's what I was. <laughs> that's perfect. I was. I, I'm sorry. Like I am uh, of a certain generation, but that was exactly what I was thinking of. Was uh, you know some of those '90s movies? Sort of. I think at some point it'd be great to talk about. I don't that's think it's, sort of, um, it's, it's nothing like that, but um, okay. it, it can be a lot of times it's monotonous work. A lot of times it doesn't uncover, you know, a, a whole lot. Um, you know, a lot of times it's a false positive, but okay. when you know, there is something that's happening, yes. Uh, I mean, I've, I've experienced it. Um, your blood does get pumping and you're like, all right, we got them now, you know, um, <laughs> but it's not quite uh, as theatrical as uh, what's depicted in Hollywood, unfortunately. I bet that there's a lot of uh, sort of, you know, dark screens with green text and reading and finding and reading and correlating there's, that sort of gets you to the point now. Yes, that's the analytical uh, side of it, right? So we're looking at multiple sources, right? So we're looking at, you know, the trends that we're picking up potentially between customers as well, because we can learn a lot of information uh, before we even get to you know, Talos, before we can even get to some of the other repositories that we'll utilize or even get, you know, the, uh, the subject submitted into a, you know, analysis engine, right? We're looking at what have we learned uh, from, you know, some takeaways from other customers that we may have seen this before in, right? So that's okay. a very powerful uh, piece of intelligence for us, right? So we're able to utilize those files that we may have uh, looked at before. Um, well, this customer is using it for this, and you know, we're, we're fairly certain it's it's not going to do anything malicious, right? So, even before um, you know, we're able to leverage that information, um, you know, just because we have a, a very cohesive team. So, your team obviously is going to be then. I mean, yeah, understanding and, and knowing about trends, you know, types of attacks that are coming into certain types of organizations, and then be able to say, hey, wait, this looks like. Um, yep. Can you? Do you have a couple of cool customer stories you could tell us, whether it's about, you know, uncovering a, a unique situation or, you know, maintaining, I mean, I've, I've worked with customers in the past and we've talked about their security trainings and, and there are some, you know, some big names that are out there. We, I think we've all seen things, I'm sure we've all seen things in the news, whether it's New Orleans or Atlanta, right, municipalities who've had unbelievable, uh, you know, very negative um, situations happen, right, from an InfoSec perspective, or, or DLA Piper, uh, which was one a few years ago that was used as a sort of a case study for some law firms I'd worked with. Um, obviously, you don't have to name names, but I mean, if you have a couple of interesting ones, I'm sure that uh, that'd be something that folks would love to hear, too. Uh, you know, I, I have a, a recent uh, one, and I can't, it kind of just underscores uh, the importance of multiple tools. Uh, we have a customer of ours that recently had, uh, a, you know, a potential issue in terms of security, um, and uh, we had an I, we worked with an IR team uh, that was called in by the insurance company, 
And the IR team, you know, their first thing was to do uh, was to put, uh, you know, endpoint solution that they preferred onto all the devices that could support it. Um, and, that, and that was fine, and that was the way they approached it. Um, but it was, uh, as far as I could tell, and what ended up being the, the, uh, the you know, moral of the story is that it was a very one-dimensional approach. Right, so yeah, we were able to see a lot. And by the way, the the customer was uh, did have uh, you know a solution already in place that was picking up the same basically the same information. Uh, but we were able to utilize uh, the network traffic analytical um, you know, piece of this. In this case, it was Stealthwatch Cloud uh, to really give a you know a, a bird's eye view of of the, you know that particular environment. Right, so. Before we in instituted that, and you know, we have you know, some great levity in getting that product onto a network, especially in these cases, because you know you can run a trial for a set period of time, right? So uh, before we did uh, and in instituted that visibility, uh, we, it was essentially a, a game of whack-a-mole, right? We would see uh, issues uh, pop up on various devices and then disappear. Right, so what we were able to do and piece together because we had that visibility tool was, uh, you know, we were able to see, all right, well, this is actually at the same time that this was occurring on this device, we saw that this device was uh, effectively controlling it using RDP, right? Um, without getting into, you know, a lot of details, this was actually, um, you know, a, uh, a NAS device uh, that was doing this. And the NAS device, of course, it was, you know, running a, a Specific operating system and did not have the uh, the agent installed uh, that the IRT put in. Right. So um, once we were able to see that behavior with the, the you know Stealthwatch Cloud, we were able to go ahead and squash that right away, cut off internet connection, and that pretty much solved that problem. Believe it or not. Um, so now it's it just kind of underscores you know why um, you know we we need uh, you know all those different pieces. This to really give you an effect. Right. Um, so, so, you know, it, it would, so the, the endpoint protection, right, solves one component of it or starts to solve, and then anomaly detection with, with Stealth Watch um, gave, gave that additional layer right. of, and so, again, goes so back to the context. So, hey, where's this coming from and when? Yeah. Uh, important uh, to note there. So, really, with the Stealth Watch piece, because uh, Stealth Watch Cloud is uh, one of my favorite products, it, it just it's very easy to install. Um, it, it didn't actually help in terms of the, the anomaly piece because it wasn't in the, in the network long enough because we basically spun it up uh, in order to help with this. But what it okay. provided for us was uh, a look, a, you know, a detailed look into all the conversations uh, that were occurring on the network. So once we had uh, an idea, well, we could see within the endpoint, hey, this was actually occurring. We saw these PowerShell scripts running. Um, you know, there are several attempts to go ahead and utilize uh, tools such as Mimikatz. Um, we were able to uh, determine, well, what was actually happening in terms of the network? Where, where was this attack coming from? So that's where we were able to determine it was actually coming from this NAS device. Um, so, you know, once we cordoned that off, we, we, we essentially starved the attackers out. So, and these bad actors are, they're probably always looking for the same thing, right? They're looking for what? Money? It's almost always financial, almost. Uh, and it's based in finance, or it could also be, you know, uh, it certainly could be, you know, some sort of uh, information that they're looking for. Uh, that, that has value. Confidential, you know, anything. Okay. Uh, it, it could be that, uh, but I would say the lion's share of the cases are mm -hmm. financially motivated, right? Um, it, it's not usually a nation state that uh, is looking for, you know, uh, industry secrets. So all, well, we've okay. seen that though, and that's certainly a possibility, but for the most part, um, you know, the, the sophistication of, of some of these guys uh, or gals, uh, I should say, you know, it, it, it's not that hard to defend against some of this stuff as long as you're utilizing the right um, that being said, you're, you're not going to stop everything for sure. Um, you know, what you can hope to do is, is catch it um, or understand, you know, when something is actually wrong so that you can go ahead and, and take countermeasures uh, to prevent, um, you know, a, a, a 
potential breach, right? And so that's what we're trying to avoid, an actual information breach, um, you know, or some, something as horrifying as, you know, most customers, you know, really lose sleep over a ransomware type of uh, incident, right? Um, but it could get worse than that even. Um, you know, so if there's information that's disclosed, sensitive information, um, it, we've seen that time and again, unfortunately. But uh, it, it's usually motivated financially, right? Uh, that, that makes sense. I mean, that's sort of the age-old story, right, if you will. Um, hmm. So that's very interesting. Yeah, th thank you for, for some of those sort of outside of the lines details, right? I think it, uh, it helps uh, the folks who are on and, and who may be watching the recording to understand, again, more context around what Aspire's security practice uh, is focused on and then, uh, how the MBR operates and what the MBR is focused to do. Um, I'm sure we could probably also do a separate deep dive session on, you know, some different sort of white labeled sort of situations that you've seen because uh, this is this again, as we've seen, these things seem to be continuing to happen and um, the, the, the attacks sort of change, but uh, uh, come rooted for the, the same key things. Um, in the in interest of, of keeping our, our tech cast, so we can give people back a few minutes of their hour. Uh, which we always like to end, you know, five or ten minutes early if we can. Um, are there other thoughts or, or piece of information that you would would want to share about the MDR um, besides the one thing that I think we should mention, which is how people can get started with us, uh, which is to reach out to sales at AspireTransforms.com, of course. But are there any other th sort of items that you feel like I might have missed that you would want to make sure people are aware of about the service and, and, and our capabilities? I, I can jump in there if you, if you like, John. Um, Do that. I, I would just say that regardless of where you are in terms of your security maturity and whether you have some of these tools, all these tools in place, um, we can help. Um, so our recommendation is to, to have those, those layers of detection ac across the, the cloud and the network and the endpoint, uh, and we can fill those gaps for you as, as part of the managed service, and we can do that either on a consumption basis or, you know, there's enterprise agreements and things like that that we can, that we can take advantage of. But what that does in terms of our ability to identify um, and analyze and be able to enrich that data that's coming in to make those decisions, is this, you know, verify true positive or is this a, a you know, is this a, a, you know, something that we don't have to be worried about? Um, and then we have that integration across the architecture. So if we're seeing something here, we can apply policy across the, across the environment to, to, to minimize that risk. Um, and then at the same time, we can also introduce some automation where if we see X, you know, run this, you know, Y automation script, and that's going to, you know, take, uh, take pre preventative actions across the environment. So that, that enrichment, that context, that automation, um, the, that integrated threat intelligence, all those things allow us to identify those, those malicious issues faster and then be able to respond to them um, in near real time to minimize that risk. Does that make sense? It does. What I, what I love about this, too, is it, it, You've created um, not only, a, I think, a very obviously a very strong service, but also to an internal, you know, a group of experts and a knowledge base that continues to grow. Right, every new type of thread or every new experience that comes in is something that the uh, Aspire, you know, MBR team continues to develop and, and understand further, so that when the next attack happens for the next customer, whether they're the same industry, different industry, doesn't matter. Um, you have uh, studied, experienced, capable hands um, who are, um, again, in my 1990s fantasy hacker movie, able to say, aha, I've seen this and I've got this guy, um, and, uh, and, and address it quickly with, with actionable plans that uh, are, are shared to, to customers in a digestible format. So um, it, it's, it's exciting stuff. I, I think, again, as I speak as somebody who's always loved collaboration, but I think um, you may be challenging uh, my heart for collaboration mm -hmm. to now move more towards security. So, um, I hope so. Yeah. No, thank you. <laughs> thank you. I, it's, I, again, I think we could have some separate focus sessions and talk about different subtopics inside of here. Um, 
in order to, you know, whether talk, we talk about the, the broader architectural mapping of it, or we talk about, you know, just general stories of, of what we're seeing and what we've seen. But um, I, I, I don't think I'm authorized to eat up too much more of your, your, your time. So um, Doug, John, thank you so much for your time. Um, and, and for the folks yeah. who have joined us, Everybody. and again, anyone who is watching, you know, this recording um, outside of this time, thank you for, for participating with us. Um, we are Aspire and to contact us, to reach out, to get started with or start to understand how the Aspire MDR service could fit into your security journey, you can reach out to sales at AspireTransforms.com and uh, we would be happy to work with you. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Josh. Thanks, everybody. Thank you for joining the Aspire Technology Partners TechCast. For more information about us, please visit www.aspiretransforms.com or call 732-847-9600 to speak to one of our experts. For Aspire Technology Partners, this is Josh Dolby.